Yes, welcome to the No Safe Project live from the Fort Hyde compound here in Mesa, Arizona on LRN.FM, the Liberty Radio Network, and also streaming live on my YouTube channel, which I do have to apologize until I get my main com my, the computer I normally do the show on. We're not, uh, the video's not too good. But hey, who can, you know, just, uh, you could, as long as we can hear the show, then, then we're doing, you know, that's all that, that, that matters. Uh, but, uh, welcome back. Oh, it's, uh, 420, uh, April 20th, 2019, live from the Fortified Compound here in Mesa, Arizona. And I'm uh, glad everyone's tuning in today. Got a lot of stuff to get to. And if you want to join me, uh, I want to thank everybody for the continued support of the big broadcast. So, uh, if you'd like to be able to, to help support the show, you can do so at uh, markstevens.sales.com. That's markstevens.sales.com, and also my website, markstevens.net. Yeah, I got the new, I got the old background up, so uh, it, it's cool to you know to you know pull that thing out, and I'll start using that again. Uh, so uh, just, just so there's no, you know, no uh, disagree. You know, it, it's a show about anarchy. So that's what the show is about. It's about getting to a voluntary society. And by anarchy, what I mean, of course, is no rules. Not that there's no rules. Uh, no rule is no rule in class. And the idea that it's it, it, and why I'm an anarchist, and I believe those tuning into the show, anarchists, uh, for the same reason, is that it is wrong to lie, steal, and kill uh, and cheat other people just because you call yourself government. That uh, we reject the notion that it is. Uh, that, that this group of people that it is that, that they have a moral right to do what is immoral that, that they are have a moral right to do what if you and I did would be considered a crime. So that that's that, that that's the basis there. If you want to join me on the big show, it's two one eight six three two nine three nine nine two one eight six three two nine three nine nine. The passcode is twenty twenty. With the pound sign. That's 2020 with the pound sign or hashtag. And uh, also Skype, but uh, uh, instant message me first. It is uh, Frank Rizzo 3. That's Frank Rizzo with the number 3. Uh, we'll get you into the uh, the big broadcast there. So uh, we're having a little issue with the camera here. We'll try to do a little. Boo. Yeah, we got a really cheap studio here, a really cheap home studio. So. Uh, anyway, uh, what are we going to be getting to today? You know, uh, I'm going to talk about something about court, but there's something else that's going to be in the video and, uh, I, I probably won't be able to get into as much detail. Uh, but it, it's the idea of the, the ruling class and, and how the wealthy, uh, who always seek to have a government in that, uh, you know, the wealthy and the elite, the rules don't apply to them. That even if they are caught and they are uh, even prosecuted, just like the Dupont heir, uh, they don't go. They don't get prison time. Uh, when when you have billions, you don't go to prison. You just pay a fine, if that. Uh, and so, uh, in in that light, and and this this video, it's it, it it it. There's a lot of stuff to get in there. And uh, no, I'm not going to clickbait it and say, oh, the top five times the wealthy and the elite got got uh, away with uh, crimes i'm not going to cheapen things that way but there, there are quite a few examples here and one of the, a really big example that i hadn't even you know i i, I don't something i I, it, I didn't find this in my research uh when i was researching how the wealthy get a, uh, away with crimes i don't know why this came up but it it, drew, it it caught my attention i'm like how could i possibly forgotten one of the biggest examples one of the worst examples of how the ruling class the wealthy can do almost anything and not get prosecuted and the business plot the business plot from a, it was a conspiracy, and nine, this is not a conspiracy theory. This is conspiracy fact. The business plot was an alleged, alleged political conspiracy in 1933 in the United States. Retired Marine Corps Gen Major General, one of the most highly decorated guys up to that point, Smedley Butler, claimed that wealthy businessmen were plotting to create a fascist veterans organization with Butler as its leader and use it in a coup d'etat to overthrow President Franklin D. Roosevelt. 
In 1934, Butler testified before the United States House of Representatives Special Committee on Un-American Activities. It was the McCormack-Dickstein Committee uh, on these claims. No one was prosecuted. At the time of the incidents, news media dismissed the plot. Yeah, see, when you're wealthy, is it front page news about Ep Jeffrey Epstein and the sweetheart deal Alexander Acosta? It's not even a part of the, 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 the news anymore. Uh, they dismissed the plot with a New York Times editorial characterizing it as a gigantic hoax. While historians have questioned whether or not a coup was actually close to execution, most agree that some sort of wild scheme was contemplated and discussed. The fact that they went to Sm Smedley Butler, that's conspiracy to overthrow the United States government. Now, whether you carry that out is not... It, it, that, it, that does, it, it's con the conspiracy itself. And there were hearings on this. Nothing. No prosecution. Nothing. They got away with it. They got away with it. Imagine that. Can you imagine one of the little people conspiring to overthrow the government? Again, you know, so-called terror plots, they don't have to carry it out. They just have to plan it. During the mccormack Dickstein committee hearings, Butler testified that Gerald C. McGuire attempted to recruit him to lead a coup, promising him an army of 500,000 men for a march on Washington, D.C. and financial backing. Butler testified that the pretext for the coup would be that the president's health was failing. Despite Butler's support for President Roosevelt in the election and his reputation as a strong critic of capitalism, Butler said the plotters felt his good reputation and popularity were vital in attracting support amongst the general public and saw him as easier to manipulate than others. Given a successful coup, Butler said that the plan was for him to have uh, held near-absolute power and newly created position of Secretary of General Affairs while Roosevelt would have assumed a figurehead role. Wow. You know, uh, Smedley Butler, I think there's video and audio of him, actually, at least audio of him discussing that there are transcripts of, and he, you know, he's saying who did this, you know, this guy McGuire. Uh, he met with a Sterling, Robert Sterling Clark. Clark was an art collector and an heir to the Singer Corporation fortune. McGuire had known Robert Clark when he was a second lieutenant in China during the Boxer Rebellion. Clark had been nicknamed the Millionaire Lieutenant. Nothing. They didn't do anything. Oh, it's the rich because if you're wealthy, if you have enough money, it's just like, uh, what's his name? I quoted on the show, uh, Vince Neal. That's the power of cash. If you've got enough money, even if they do catch you, even if they do prosecute you, you do not go to prison. Prison is for the little people. It is extremely rare for one of the of the elite class, to, especially high level politics. It is very rare for them to go to prison. That is the exception, not the rule. But it's the opposite when you're one of the plebes. When you're one of the little people, if you're not one of the useful idiots, we go to prison. It's 420 today. How many people? And there's an example that I have in the video of a man with two joints getting over 10 years in prison. Prison. Vince Neal killed somebody. This Robert Allen Murray falsified a court document to coerce someone to take a guilty plea because they were pushing for a life sentence. Nothing. No no jail time for Robert Allen Murray, who, by the way, I did, I did get in touch with a new prosecutor there and I was asking, and I, I doubt, I'm going to have to make a call on Monday, because I doubt they're going to respond to an email, because I found out about it too late on, on Friday to, to make a, a, a call. And that was, uh, you know, the new prosecutor asked him, why criminal charges were not brought against Robert Allen Murray? Expe you know, since he had done such a, a, a terrible thing, and admittedly did such a terrible thing. Well, we'll be back with your calls here. On uh, the other side of the break, uh, so don't go away. And for those on YouTube, it is a commercial. It is a commercial broadcast. It's a radio show, so just hold tight, and I will be on the uh, the chat. 
Yes, welcome back to the No State Project live from the Fortified Compound in Mesa, Arizona on this August 20th. It's 420, baby, for the whole show. All three hours of Anarchy Radio, it's 420. So uh, the call line I did, I, I'm on the call line now. I never take calls during the first segment because it's too short. And I save a little bit of money there because it costs me anyway. Uh, glad to be with you here if you want to join me here on the big show. It's 218-632-9399. 218-632-9399. The passcode is 2020 with the pound sign. And again, I know that the video quality is not as good today, but uh, who gives a damn? You guys all know what I look like, but, you know, so as long as I get to stream the show and, and more people can hear it, that's all that uh all they mad is there so i got everything we're gonna get with uh tom welcome back tom you want to talk about criticisms of capitalism today yeah uh, hi mark hey um i'm hearing uh okay it's gone now i was hearing a, a, an echo um yeah you know again rika made a good point uh we don't want rulers no rulers but free trade not allowed how does that work well, where who said that? Rika. Rika said that. I mean, well, who said what? No free trade? Well, who's I mean, saying no free... How do you have free trade without capitalism? How does that work? You think that, that you can't have free trade if you just said socialism? <laughs> Are you kidding me? No, I'm not kidding you. I'm I, I'm dead serious. Are you 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 you, te- you you strike me as somebody who listens too much to uh, another self proclaimed anarchist who doesn't have uh, much of an understanding of no, socialism? No. no, Mr. Stevens, I'll tell you what. My family lived in East Germany from the time the, the you know the Russians went in and took over until the wall went down. And I'm telling you right now, socialism completely saps the motivation of going to work. So, because you can't keep the fruits of your labor. That's, that's not, that, that, that's not, that's not, the, that, that's not a, a key feature of socialism there. And for those, if, if you want to argue that socialism kills innovation, please explain to me how many innovations and why there are so many innovations from a, 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 an organization known as NASA. Uh, <laughs> you're, so you're going to compare NASA where our money is stolen and given to them with a, a country like uh, East Germany. Is that what you're doing? Well, what I'm, we're talking about, we're talking about the the uh, uh, socialism and critiques of socialism and, co- and, and capitalism, okay? And you're making a comment and a claim where you're arguing that socialism kills. You're making a blanket generalization there that socialism kills innovation. And I gave you a counterexample to that argument to show that the argument is doesn't hold, have merit beca- you know, beca- as a generalization. You can't, you're just making a generalization. That's like saying that every everything about capitalism is sugar and spice and everything nice. And damn it, it's not. And, and you can't, and I'm not going, wait, let me finish. And I'm absolutely not going to accept that Oh, well, that's corporatism, or that's crony capitalism, or when the car industries uh, decided it was better to settle wrongful death lawsuits, okay, than fix their damn cars, because it was more expensive to retool the, the factories and recall the cars and fix them. No, it's less money to just pay for the wrongful death ones, and then to turn around and say that that's not a legitimate critique of capitalism. There is good and bad on both capitalism and socialism, and when you, if you make a generalization, I'm going to, and I don't think it's correct. I'm going to give you a counter argument or a counter example to to show that what you're saying is, is not true across the board. That you're generalizing. So now let me ask. Well, I, I want to stick with the, the car company situation just now. <clears throat> One of the reasons that the car companies could get away with that is because government's involved and they make what's called a corporation. So nobody is held responsible or liable for an act for the death of people. There's the problem. That has nothing to do with capitalism. Nothing. Or the free market. They made a determination and they and and I think I think it was Ford and it uh, other car companies have done this too. They make a calculated decision. It costs them less money because there's, they could be a corporation. They're still subject to, uh, and they have lost cases, many cases, uh, for wrongful death. 
So the idea that they're completely immune because the government makes them a corporation doesn't hold, you know, they're, they're still held to some accountability. They should be in prison, yes, and sometimes they do. Uh, uh, but as far as the car companies, they made a calculated decision. What is the, they made a cost benefit analysis, right? Part and uh, parcel of capitalism. And they decided that it was better to pay out, it was cheaper to pay out the wrongful death than to retool. What the hell did that have to do with government? Get making them a corporation. DuPont. It has everything to do with it. DuPont did exactly the same thing when they uh, invented uh, Teflon. And the chemicals involved in, in basically the same exact same deal. They made a cost estimate, uh, you know, cost analysis of the losses. And they can only do that because they can hide behind the veil of a corporation and nobody goes to jail. If people were held accountable in those companies it, it, they, and went to prison, that would be a big difference between, well, we'll just pay out a few billion dollars. That's the problem, Mark. It has nothing to do with the free market. It has everything to do with the fact that nobody's being held accountable in this so-called uh, capitalist society. You name one real true capitalist society. There isn't one. Well, this, but, but the, the counter-argument to when you give a German explanation is that the problem with the socialism is because the socialists used the tools of government to do what they were doing. So it's not necessarily so what you're caught, what it, it, it comes down to is it's more of a critique about government and less of a critique of capitalism and socialism. So you can't, you know, you can't have your cake and eat it too. If you're going to excuse all the problems that are associated with, so, with, with capitalism because of government intervention and government help, then the same thing goes for what's happening in Germany and other socialist countries. Uh, you know, and, 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 okay. I mean, don't you think that's a fair argument that if it, it's the government intervention that's the issue, not necessarily the philosophy or, or of, or the principles of socialism? Well, I will agree that it is the government intervention that is, that is making capitalism look bad. Okay. That I'll agree with. But that's as far as I'm going to go. Because oh. I know what my, what my grandfather, for instance, he was a fisherman. Uh, his whole life, you know, they had this fishing boat, I mean, a big boat. And they'd go out, and they would uh, catch eel, and like eel is a real delicacy. And they would have a separate tank in their ship to put these eels that they wanted to take home. Because they had to turn in all the fish at the port. But they would, the communist system would give them what was, what was fair to pay them. And then they could buy back what, what they wanted. And my grandfather, they would, you know, they would, Oh my gosh, they muzzled some of their own catch. And my, my father, uh, my grandfather had a smoke shack, you know, where he would smoke the eel. Well, well Tom, hold on just a second. I got to put you on hold. Okay. hold well, keep, keep, on, yep. keep that thought about, uh, about the eels in the ship. We'll be back here. Uh, we're talking about critiques about socialism and capitalism. And if, if, if all the evils of capitalism can be attributed to government intervention, then why can't all the evils of socialism be also attributed to government intervention and not the philosophy or principles of socialism. Not that I'm a socialist. But we'll be back with Tom from the Big D in just a moment, so don't go away. Yeah, welcome back to the No State Project. It's getting heated up in here, always. Uh, and I think a problem comes down to is... is, is uh, and Tom, uh, we'll get to your, your, your story in a second. I, I, and just to, to, get, to lead into this, for those just tuning in, I think there's a, a, uh, uh, a conflating that and I know, and I know certainly people who go under the banner of a narco capitalist, uh, conflate free trade with capitalism and think that free trade and capitalism are one and the same thing. And, uh, and, 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 and they're not. Uh, so I would, yeah, I'm definitely all for free trade. Uh, but let's get back to your story about what happened in Germany with the eels. Okay. Well. Uh, like I said, my grandfather was a fisherman, and uh, he had to turn in all the fish, all the fish that him and his crew caught. They would have to go to the port, turn it all in. They would be paid what the government decided was fair, and then they would be able to buy back whatever food they wanted, whatever fish they wanted. And he would smuggle his own, you know, he had his own little uh, tank in the, in, the, in the ship. Anyway, so my father, my, my grandfather was smoking the eel in his smoke shack, and my, this is back in about 66 or so. And my father had a, a home, you know, camera and popped the door open on the sh on the smoke shack and he was recording my grandfather and my grandfather had a fit because 
his neighbors could possibly turn him in and be rewarded for it. He was literally scared for his life to smoke eel in his own shed, the only eel that he caught. Now, what the hell is that? You want that? No, we're not discussing that. We're, we're, what the question I was putting on would like to put to you is if we can blame uh, every single problem with capitalism on government intervention, then why at the same time can we not blame all the uh, problems with socialism, the philosophy of socialism, the way socialism is supposed to uh, be done, such as like fire departments, uh, which is a good example of socialism, then why can't all the problems with socialism be uh, excused away as just government intervention and, gov and being that it's a government problem? Because socialism uh, at its core doesn't require a state and and uh, it doesn't uh, uh, necessarily just like uh, uh, socialism doesn't um, advocate for a state. So, so explain okay, that well, to me. Guess, explain to me the difference. Why well, can well, capitalism well, with the, well, those problems I need to be on the same page? I need to understand what your concept of socialism is because I apparently don't. I've mentioned this like a thousand times on the show. I've actually read it directly, and I'll do it again. Socialism at its core is common ownership of the means of production. So an example of that is like a fire department like we have now. Capitalism is, and, and the main part that separates capitalism from socialism, the, 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 the defining factor is private ownership over the means of production. Okay? That, okay, now hold on, hold on, hold on. First off, you're using a fire department as an example, and the fire department doesn't produce anything. It's, so what, an uh, come on, Tom! Don't don't do that. We're talking we're talking about the means of production, and we're talking about the ownership and control and, and, and uh, 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 of a company, for example. Okay, means of production is just a broad term. So whether it's a fire department or it's a factory, it's it, 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 it's, it's the same thing. We're talking about common ownership, and and that's a defining factor as opposed to capitalism, which is private ownership of the means or the ownership okay. of a company. All right, now, now you've explained it. Now you tell me, explain to me how does common ownership happen without force by someone to make everyone, <laughs> you know, share everything? How, how does that work? Well, let's first address the 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 issue because you are trying to, ex and we'll get to that. We got plenty of time. I want still to flesh out the issue and get uh, some discussion on why you think it's okay to excuse all the evils of capitalism on government intervention, but you're not willing to say that the evils of socialism uh, are, are not the result of the same government type of action. Well, okay, I like I like that question, and I'd like to address like a lot of times when I talk to people about the free, you know, no state idea, and that it. And they all say it, it can't happen, it doesn't work, and I say, well, we've never actually had a chance to even try it. There's been nowhere that a, a, a state hasn't been established and someone takes control. So we don't know how it will work. And I say the same answer to you when you're telling me that uh, uh, capitalism being uh, uh, organized by government with this idea of corporations and being able to stand behind them, We've never had true capitalism. We've never had a true free market. It doesn't exist. It never has. Well, maybe, maybe way back when, when this country was first founded, that, that's possible. But as soon as the taxation started, uh, that no longer was the case now, was it? Or is it? Well, and we, we've never had free market socialism either because of the same conditions. The same conditions that prevented free market capitalism prevented free market socialism. Well, again, my question is, how can free market uh, ownership of everything be free market? How does that work? In your, but, your okay, but philosophy? let's first let's first get to and and address and you know and finally get an answer on this. Why is it okay to excuse all the evils of capitalism on government intervention, but you can't, by the same token, or you, you use the same argument to argue away the evils of socialism? Well, I, I think I just explained it. We, we we don't have true capitalism. We never had. Didn't so, I just explain I, that we've I, never I, had true free market socialism either? Because of the same government intervention. How can Mark? You, you're using it's a it's a oxymoron to call free market and socialism in the same sentence. You just said in your your definition of socialism is the shared common shared 
uh, like the fire department, and you know, and that's a bad example. I'm, I'm like, because the fire department, yeah, we do we privatize that. We all need it, yada yada. But you're telling me that you want a common shared auto company? I didn't say that. No, yeah, I I have been on record. Tom, let me finish. I've been okay. on record that what we have now and what every country, if you will, has is a mixed economy. And anybody who doubts that the United States, and Canada, and Europe and whatnot is not a mixed economy between socialism and capitalism either doesn't understand the concepts or is lying to you. We have a mixed economy. And I've been on record many times. Oh, we do. Now, my I problem... Agree. I agree. Like I said, we've never had one a, a true free market. I, I, I yeah, that, I, I get that. Okay, but I, but you but you if you're going to say that and extend that that same that argument to free market capitalism, you have to extend the same damn thing to free market socialism. <laughs> socialism doesn't mean you can't have free market. That's just not. That's just not true. You can. You have to understand socialism better. We have a mixed economy. Those people who hold up their damn cell phones and say this is what capitalism gets you. Uh, don't understand that the entire infrastructure to deliver that phone is om almost the entire infrastructure to deliver that phone is socialism. The roads, the airports, you name it, socialism. The electricity, socialism. The pro okay, the problem that I have with this, whether it's the, this mixed economy, which I, ha I think is, 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 is fine. The problem that I have as an anarchist is I don't want either one of them to be propped up with a prison system. Or your money. Or your forced labor. Exactly. Right? Yes. That's the problem. The problem is the violence. And that's why I have a problem with it. I have no problem with communal, community owned things like fire departments and hospitals as long as we're not forced to pay for them. And that's why I've talked about this on the show about the carrot and the stick. And where you have corporations, for example, or businesses, if they want, you know, instead of taxing them, they still pay the fees to have these services, which we all take advantage of, but we're not going to use a prison system to pay for them. That's where I see the problem is. My problem isn't, oh, it's socialism. I'm an American. No, my problem is using the force to get the support and using and that force being used to prop up a ruling class where the rules don't apply to them. That's my problem with it. And uh, we're up against the break. So let, we'll address what your problems may be with it. Uh, when we get back. And uh, the number here is 218-632-9399, 218-632-9399. The critiques, criticisms of capitalism and socialism from whatever your political stripe may be. But eh, hopefully you're an anarchist. But we'll be back here with your calls in just a few moments. Don't go away. Yes, welcome back to the new State Project here on LRN.FM, Liberty Radio Network, and live from the Fortified Compound in Mesa, Arizona. Because when you're an anarchist, when you actually challenge and question the status quo and the way things are, you know, claim to have to operate, uh, you, you know, uh, especially if you're questioning the, the moral basis and the legitimate basis of governments, you don't live in a house. You live in a compound. You don't have a basement. You have an underground bunker. So welcome back, everybody. You want to join me here on the big show? It is 218-632-9399. 218-632-9399. The passcode is 2020 with that there pound sign. And uh, talking with Tom in the Big D, heated discussion regarding the, the you know, criticisms of socialism and capitalism. Uh, you know, I, All right, so where were we, Tom? Bring me, bring me back. Well... Go with this with you, Mark. I, I, I you're just you blow, you blow on my last break. I, I, I'm hoping I'm going to get off this because I'm hoping somebody that can maybe debate this better than I can can do so with you. And I, I'm going to let somebody else take take over. Ah, oh, come. On. Let me ask you this time: do you, do you, Is there any valid criticism against capitalism that you, that you would admit to? As, as all these folks keep saying, and as I keep saying, there has never been a true capitalism in this country. The moment they wrote the Constitution and formed the government and limited what people can do and started taxing them, that was the end of it. 
There is no true capitalism. It's never been tried. So I can't explain how it would work without government other than, hey, let's give it a shot. Let's actually try free trade. So you you, 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 don't, you don't have any examples. So you, you think that if, if somebody claims to own uh, a lake or he claims to own a river, uh, because he got there first, or he, you know, okay, you, that he he owned. You don't have a problem with that. You don't think that there's of any course. kind of. And, and, and that would not listen. That would not even be. That's such a far fetched, goofy idea. Okay. Because none of us would tolerate it. Oh, okay. It's just like uh, the Pol Pot, Stalin's, and Hitler's aren't the ones that I'm afraid of. No. It's the idiots that follow them and pick up guns and enforce what they want to do. Hitler could stand up. Trump could stand on his head all day long. Demand this and demand that, and unless somebody with guns supports them, he mm-hmm. can't do anything. Okay, now now follow me here, Tom. Now you say it's, and I agree with you. It's absolutely ridiculous for someone to claim that they own a river because it's a natural resource, right? People need water. Yep. Yeah. So what if somebody then claims to own all the oil in a particular area? Well, if they if they put the the, the wells up and they pumped it out of the ground. What's the problem? Uh, the problem is when they keep other people out of the area and don't allow other people to to set up their own, and uh, where they claim ownership of uh, of the of everything. Uh, look at a mine. And a you case. have wait wait like you have one person who claims. Okay. Is it okay for one person to claim that all of a gold mine is his? Mark, you're you're again not listening. If one person claims these things and everybody else laughs at him and says, "Yeah, right." How are you going to defend yourself against all of us that are now going to take some share of that, whether you like it or not? That ends the problem. The whole idea is government allows monopolies. Monopolies could never exist without government. Would you agree on that? I uh, I think that even without a government, people like uh, the Rockefellers could still have dominated the market the way they did. Yeah. It would have been a. They would have had to have their own private armies to kill all those Indians and and to take people's land. But yeah, I think they would have still been able to do it. Exactly, Mark. Exactly. That's one of my arguments that I like to use when I discuss this with people. Verizon doesn't have a private army to go slaughter the people at AT and T and fight their army. No, they compete on a. They, they compete with each other. That's the difference. That's true capitalism. Yeah, but true capitalism was also uh, the railroad magnets getting, you know, and colluding with uh, with Rockefeller. That was true capitalism, wasn't yeah. it? You just said it. They're colluding, and even if they built their own private army, it's way too expensive to go to war rather than to negotiate and 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 commit to free trade. Because there's way too many of us that aren't going to tolerate it. If one little, like you, like even I believe in your book that Stephen said so. That without government, there would still be skirmishes, but there would there there would never be a war because it's too costly. Okay, so if, if the if if without a government, the 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 the, the, the capitalist the cap- owns the entire all the all the gold in the mine because he got there first. Okay, he staked his claim; he owns it. Now, without a government, how does he enforce that claim that he has now private ownership of, of that? How does he enforce it? With his own. The only way he could do it is with the, with his own army, and that would be yeah, far too expensive. There you go. They, yeah. So, uh, so, but but still, the same thing that we've never had any kind of uh, true free market socialism because the same thing. As soon as government was there, they would they would do in the dictates. So, do you have a problem? How, how would again? How does socialism work? How do you force people to share their private stuff? Like like Rita says. If I can't have my own private property, then I don't own myself. How do you enforce that without a government and an army that, like we have now? Well, you could use the same. You could use the. You could use the same excuse. Like, w- w- how does somebody enforce? How does the capitalist enforce his 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 property right claim to an entire mine? Without the government and without an army, he can't. So you you've got the same That's critique right. against the capitalist as you do against the socialist. The thing is, the socialism. You you keep painting with such a broad brush. Market social free market socialism does not require that people you, that that there's force. You can run it l- l- again. Uh, let's use NASA uh, as an example or, or a fire department. Okay, where you have community ownership. Nobody has to be forced to support that. 
and and to and to and for people you know to to then provide those to provide that service. You don't have to use force. Just like you don't have to use force, uh, you know, to necessarily enforce property rights. You can have uh, a, a system similar to what we have now, or basically the same as where you have titles and whatnot. People tend to respect that. Uh, yeah, are there going to be skirmishes? Yeah, but that doesn't, that's not a critique necessarily again, you know, is why we shouldn't have a capitalist type system. But can you at least agree before you go that, uh, if we have a mixed system of socialism and capitalism like we have now, but without government and without force, that it could work just fine? No, I can't agree with that because that's, that's, again, without government, there wouldn't be a, a thing called capitalism or socialism. It would just be a free market. Those terms wouldn't even exist. That no, I, I'm good. I, I, again, I thought we agreed to the terms. Capitalism was private ownership of the means of production. Okay, basically the you know, like the, of a company, uh, and socialism was was was, was community owned or, or uh, you know so, socially owned, or com, you know commonly owned. Uh, so you don't well, see again, as I, I don't I don't I don't understand how something can be commonly owned if without force and violence. It's not possible. I disagree with you there. I think that if we were well, to let me and an example is what I what I would like to do. Uh, not work, uh, I have to get in touch with some people. I haven't had the time to do that. But uh, if if what we had now in New Hampshire, for example. If they just changed the policy and didn't use a prison system and violence to uh, uh, collect the money necessary to run it, and you stripped them of immunity and stuff like that, and they, it really it wasn't a ruling class. It wasn't them, uh, you know, ordering people what to do. You know, if you if you took away the violent support, it could continue functioning, and I think it would continue functioning. It would be even better, and you can make it transparent. And I think it could function pretty damn well. You 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 still have the same mixture of commu- uh, uh, of socialism and and capitalism, but you're not using a prison system to prop it up. Well, again, I I can't use a better example than AT and T versus Verizon, for instance. They don't have armies. That is a good example of capitalism at work. They're not killing people. Their product doesn't kill people, and they have to compete with each other. To produce a product that people can afford, and the whole motivation is to keep getting that product cheaper and cheaper and cheaper, so that their product will sell more than the other guys. That is a free market that doesn't need a gun, it doesn't need cops, it doesn't need government, and it doesn't need armies. So again, I want somebody else to get in here. So I've had enough of this. <laughs> You've had enough now. Oh yeah. well, that's too bad. Well, we're at, we're near the end of the segment, but yeah, I. I yeah, I see no problem with, with with a mixed with a mixed capitalism socialism like we have now. I I just uh, think taking the government out of the picture is uh is uh, a good way to go. Or well, the 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 violence. So hey, I appreciate the call, Tom. We're at uh, we're at the top of the hour break. We'll be back in a few minutes. You want to join me? It's two one eight six three two nine three nine nine two one eight six three two nine three nine nine. The passcode is twenty twenty. We'll be back in just a few minutes. And if you're on YouTube, yes, it is a radio broadcast. So uh, it's, it, we have two more hours. So I'm going to take a little bit of a break there, tough guys. Yes, welcome to the No Safe Project live from the Fortify Compound in Mesa, Arizona. Second of three hours of anarchy. Yeah, we got the banner of Anarchy Radio right here on the Liberty Radio Network. That's LRN.FM. And, you know, um, it's kind of symbolic, though, of of really bad thinking, in a sense, because of the colors, because it's black and white. And and even somebody, is one of these guys... uh, or the dude, uh, yeah, one of these guys saying to me, and if, uh, well, look, if you want to join me on the big show, it's 218-632-9399, 218-632-9399. The passcode is 2020 without their pound sign or the hashtag. And he's saying, if I'm, if I'm so against capitalism, why don't you give your work away instead of selling it? And it's, it's the same black and white thought that gives Right, it, it, it just gross misunderstanding. Listen to what I'm actually saying, man. It, it that that question is no different than these MAGA people and these Republican types. Is that if you don't like the United States, why don't you get the hell out? And it it is um, 
What I'm saying, like I told to Tom, we're talking about legitimate, fact-based, logical critiques of capitalism and socialism. There's good and bad with both. But people, Americans in particular, want to just have this rosy idea that there's that capitalism is the perfect ideology or or or, or principle, and 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 that if anything bad happens under capitalism, well, it's not real capitalism. Uh, we've never had it. It's not real capitalism. The idea that the that the principles of capitalism that there aren't problems that come with that when you put it into execution is just ridiculous. Uh, it's just. Uh, just as we can show the, the honest critiques about capitalism, there are honest critiques about socialism. And uh, I'm not saying that... I, I, I've even said here, I think the mixed system that we have right now, which has been in place for hundreds of years, the p only problem I see, and that the main problem where most of the problems would go away, I wrote a whole friggin' book about this, I, I've got a, a whole damn book about this. Where it's right here, okay? Government indicted. The problem is, and you have all these psychological problems that come in when you put people in control of others with no responsibility to the victims. That's the problem. The problem I've said for years, even going back to government and uh, uh, adventures in legal land. The problem that I have is the violence. It is the services being provided at the barrel of a gun. That's the problem. That's why I say on every single show, if I was to do things like the government and I was to force people in my community to give me money, would you consider me a criminal? So I'm absolutely not advocating for using violence. I, I just... I um. I, I, I'm not saying to throw, again, I, I, I shouldn't have to repeat myself so often. It drives the listenership down. What are they doing? Really bad on numbers today anyway, but, uh, it, 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 there's honest critiques of socialism, there's honest critiques of capitalism. And I don't buy this anarcho-capitalist crap that everything is sugar and spice and everything nice. Capitalism is the, is the, is, is there's no flaws in it whatsoever. And if there is a, if something does happen, not true capitalism. Uh, yeah, just like Tom tried to, try to, uh, say that market manipulation isn't an, an aspect of capitalism. That the idea that you can cut, that you have private ownership of the means of production, let's say oil. And the idea that you can't get together with other people who own their means of production and voluntarily cut your production so that you can justify a higher price to turn around and say that that is not an integral aspect of capitalism is wrong. Dead wrong. That is what comes with capitalism. It doesn't mean I want to scrap capitalism. I just think people like Jamie Dimon should be in prison for the rest of their freaking lives. And the idea that corporations, which are just people like AT&T, that they don't hurt people, uh, uh, that I, I can't. No, no, that that that's just wrong too. Uh, like just like saying banks don't hurt people. Uh, the number of there were over six thousand. I, I, I'd have to check this, but there were thousands of suicides in two thousand eight that were supposed to be related directly to the the housing crash. And I can certainly appreciate the stress that comes from finan you know financial problems. Um, anyway. Let's get to some calls. We can continue this if you want. Uh, depends on who's on the line. We've got uh, Frank in Austin, Texas. Welcome back to the big show. Hi, how are you? I'm doing well. How are you doing? I, pretty, yeah, pretty damn good. Um, anyway, I talked to you last week or so. Uh, we were talking about something. I forgot what it was. We had a good discussion, but it was I was kind of rushed, so I didn't really make my points really well. As far as this capitalism is uh and communism, these these uh these terms uh I I'm highly suspect of these terms in the first place. Because you don't use capitalism with your family. You don't use socialism with your family. You you play it by ear, you know, whatever anybody can handle. I think that people should really do what they want, uh that works for them and uh try to try
try to uh, do without government altogether if you if you have to, if you can. I, I don't I don't use government much. I mean, I have to because I'm trapped in the system. But uh, I try to live my life like I'm not trapped. I do more contributionism than any capitalism or socialism. I, I just contribute my time when I can, and uh, I'm rewarded accordingly to what I need. I don't really uh, make a profit. Uh, I, I, I think that, and that's the way I've always done my, my own personal business. I don't uh, use banks unless I'm forced to. Um, but there's a lot of corruption in capitalism and socialism, and there's no corruption at all in contributionism. Your your work is your your work is your money. Whatever you do, if you don't have if you don't do the work, you don't get the money. You know, there's people out there enjoying capitalism and socialism both, not doing the damn thing, sitting around them when they should be teaching their kids something. They're they're sitting around at their desk or whatever, and they're not make they're not making any any money at all. They're, I mean, they're making money, but they're not making any production. So either either case, I think that both terms are uh, coined by corruption, or corruptive forces in the in the world. I think contributionism is what really everybody wants to do. Well, what I, do you think? Well, I I I'm, I lean more towards mutualism uh, as an anarchist. Uh, you know, I, I think uh, as as long as the society is not based on 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 force. And the rules are prop are, are evenly applied as far as you know, do no harm. Then I don't have a problem. You know, live honestly, injure no one, give every man his due. And uh, unfortunately, in whether it's you know the socialist part of society or of our uh, you know markets uh, or the the capitalist part, the do no harm is ignored just as much on both sides. The idea, you know, and, and so I I just think that there, there needs to be mutual respect. And, uh, and and the rules apply. Checks to and balances. Checks and balances are very important, which were never followed in the Soviet Union or in uh, in the United States of America. Checks and balances are totally bought and paid for. Pretty much. I, I, I don't I don't understand how either system run by corrupt individuals can be called either one. Uh, it's corrupted. Uh-huh. Well, it, it's always been that way. It's always been a small group of people forcing the community to give them money and to support them, and they have a prison system or a bullet uh, if they disagree. And it, it, it's been, it, you know, in, in the whitewashing of history, and, uh, you know, I, I can't stand this, this, this rise of white nationalism that the white Europeans are not guilty of anything. The Indians, you know, deserve to be uh, slaughtered and uh, have their culture almost wiped off the face of the planet because. Uh, they didn't. They didn't have the same property values. They didn't have the same property concepts. So, well, hold on one second. There, uh, we we were up against a break. Hold on. We'll we'll be right back. We'll be right back in just a few moments here on the No State Project. So don't go away. Sorry about that, Frank. We'll be back in just a minute. Hold your thought. Yes, welcome back to the No State Project here on the Liberty Radio Network, LRN FM, and now uh, talking with. Frank in Austin, Texas. So I, I sorry to cut you off, but we were going to get into a break. And so for those just tuning in on YouTube, there's not too well, there's not many of us here today. Uh, but it is a, a radio broadcast, which is why uh, I'm only participating on the chat uh, during the uh, quarter of the hour breaks. So uh, I'm sorry, Frank. Where were you? Um, I was talking about how morally the capitalism and um uh, socialism are basically a uh, construct of some type of powerful individuals uh, in the past. I believe like Nietzsche, Nietzsche was financed by these individuals. Also, Marx was financed by these individuals. They all, they 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 throw all their cash in the ring and they see what comes out and then they support both sides. I think that this tactic is is very overlooked. This is, it's like a one trick pony. They've been doing it for a thousand years now. And nobody's caught on. I mean, Jesus, go have a life. You know, go, go develop your skills. Money is not the object. Your skills to help your brother and your sisters and the children are the, are the, are the whole point. 
It's not about money. Money comes to those who deserve it. You know, power, it's a power of, oh, I can eat, the power I can, you know, be secure in, in my my property. You know, uh, it's psychological. I mean, you have, uh, if you love your neighbor, you're going to make a lot of friends. If you're, if you're just charging your neighbor, yeah, it's not so, not so great. I make a lot of friends by contributing what I can. And I, and I have a lot of support. I'm very rich in, in, um, uh, love. And this is basically what it's about, um, on this planet. You can't take any money with you, but you can take all the love you want with you. Well, unfortunately, most people are pretty materialistic, and some of us, you're, you're forced to have to, you have to, this is the society most of us live in, and and, that, and, uh, and what I see is, what I'd like to just, at least in my lifetime, get to at least a more ethical, a moral society where uh, governments as we know it today are, are gone, and uh, you, know, you don't have a ruling class. You know, as far as what you're right. talking I, about, I agree. That, that certainly would help when you don't have I, a, a, a a society based on violence, which is exactly what we have now, a society based on violence, where it's okay. I think that violence can be read by certain people before it even happens, because they're clean, their bodies are clean, they're in touch with their environment. Uh, people who uh, mess themselves all up physically and mentally... Uh, they need a government, for God's sake. It's so sad that they need this government. But a lot of people don't need a government. I don't need a government. I, I, I don't use license plates. I don't use um, a license for my, for my automobile. Uh, I don't go to court. I don't, I don't get tickets. I get pulled over, but I don't get tickets. And I, and I, love, I love everyone. I mean, it's really how you go into this. If you want to fight... Uh, powers that are um, giving you the opportunity to make a choice. Uh, okay, you're either you're either going to uh, shine love out of your heart, or you're going to shine fear out of your heart. If you shine fear out of your heart, you get a ticket. If you go into court with all kinds of tickets, like I had when I first began this quest of uh, being free. I had all kinds of tickets, but I went up to the judge and I said, you know, judge, you got really nice hair there. Uh, all your friends, I, I've met all your friends and they say you're a nice person. Uh, can you, can you show me the, the, the charges that you're bringing here and so I can properly defend myself? Uh, well, I don't understand these charges because they don't have any, uh, subject matter clause or any kind of uh, intent to the law at all. How does, how do I know this applies to me? Well, you know, I talk, talk out of my heart and I get a response, uh, let that man go. Or, um, can we make a deal? Uh, yeah, I, 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 you're not, we're not going to, I wish that 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 was you know, a tactic that we could just, you know, uh, you know, be respectful and loving and, and that would, uh, uh, that would, would help. But it it doesn't tend to work out that way, unfortunately. So it, it really is. Uh, it's it unfortunate. Does, it that does work out. It does work out if you if you take charge. If you're if you're going to take charge or be pushed around, you you have mentality when you go into a situation. Are you skillful enough to understand that these people have demons, that they have negative thoughts all day? What are you going to do to serve these people? They're your brothers and sisters. They're recalcitrant. I can't argue with that. They're very recalcitrant. But how do you treat a public servant who's recalcitrant? Do you try to try to throw them in jail? Maybe sometimes you do, but not always. Sometimes you want to say, "Look, uh, we live on the we live in the market. Whatever. It's about politics." Yeah, Politics. but, but Frank, I got to I got to move your power. I got a line of calls I've, I've got to get to, but uh, I I, I, know, I but wish what do you think about that. I, what do you I think yeah. about it? it's all politics. Oh, I agree. You know about being nice and respectful, but that that alone is not going to get. Uh, you know that alone is not an effective legal defense. That's the beginning of one, but it's certainly not something that's going. Oh, to Oh no, be. no, you got to have the skills. You got to have the skills to back it up. I'm not saying that you can just go in there and be nice to a criminal who's tra trying to destroy you. I'm saying that understand 
that your skill set is what you're carrying with you. You don't need a lawyer. You need to be a lawyer. You need to be the best lawyer in town. You need to start this education when you're eight. And, and, you need to, and you need to understand that there's a war out here. There's a war going on out here. My mother told me there's a war out here. Well, they're they're certainly using violence and a, uh, a prison system to get what they want and to keep and, and to keep them propped up, and they keep letting you know the elites get away with uh, with things that would get us uh, decades in prison. So, I appreciate the call, Frank. I like to talk to you next weekend about a different topic because I'm pretty I'm pretty uh, skillful about these things, and I'd like to share. Okay, well, we'll have uh, if we're live, we we may be live next. Yeah, we're probably going to be live next week. Actually, two weeks in a row would be nice. So, uh, yeah, give us a call. Okay, bye-bye. Appreciate it. Uh, Frank in Austin. And, uh, uh, yeah, they, uh, it, it may be a little bit, is there a war? Yeah, well, it, when you, if, if, if you're poor and you're out there on the street, uh, yeah, you certainly, uh, it does seem like a war. The number of cops that uh, wind up shooting people, especially unarmed people that are poor, uh, yeah, it does seem that way. The, the numbers don't lie. You know, we got uh, Mike in North Carolina. Oh, actually, we are right up against the break, so Mike, just hold tight. My name is Mark Stevens. You're listening to the No Say Project here on LRN.FM. The Liberty Radio Network will be back with your calls in just a moment. It's uh, 218-632-9399, and the passcode is 2020 with the pound sign, so don't go away. Yes, welcome back to the No State Project here on the Liberty Radio Network, LRN.FM. I'm glad I caught it. But for some reason, the uh, the YouTube comments, it flags when, uh, like Tom, you, you mentioned, he hasn't met Dick Noble and it flagged it. I, that, it's a little bit too much moderation there. Uh, yeah, I, I tell you, the... Uh, yeah, and I've talked about abortion on the show before, and and uh, you, Jace is saying my body is my property. I think your body is yours, but I think the uh, uh, trying to put a property label on a human body just seems repugnant to me. Uh, I, I I just um, I don't get it. I don't. I'll say the number again. It's two one eight six three two nine three nine nine two one eight six three two nine three nine nine. Passcode is 2020 with the pound signs, with the pound sign, and that'll get you into the uh, into the caller line. So uh, I, I I just the in the I, I just can't accept this uh, this. Uh, I know it's a very common common talking point with libertarians and some anarchists. Uh, you own yourself, and all of anarchism comes from self. And I disagree with that. I think you are yourself. I think it's uh, wrong to try to paint it as uh, uh, the principle of anarchy or any principle of freedom or moral principles hinges on whether you accept the argument that you own yourself. You are yourself. Uh, You're not somebody else's property. Your body is not property. I just, I cannot accept the, uh, the, the argument that uh, uh, the human body is, 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 is you reduce it to the, to just a possession of property. Uh, no, no, we, we, we stopped seeing human, we should have stopped seeing human beings as property a long time ago, an awful long time ago. Uh, but, uh, so I, you know, the, the principle of liberty and, and, and anarchy, anarchy is no rulers. And, uh, that, you know, that, because it's, it's wrong to lie, steal, kill, and cheat other people. Because you call yourself a government. It's just wrong to hurt other people. The, the, the concept of property, my body being property, doesn't have, doesn't, is not necessary to the argument. It's not necessary to the principle. So I don't think that anarchy begins with that I own myself. I am myself. It's wrong to hurt other people. Not because you're hurting their property if you punch them in the face. It's wrong because you're hurting them. The issue of property in, in your body being property is just, I, I no, I, I don't accept that. So the, the self-proclaimed anarchist, I think they, you know, to start from a faulty premise like that is just wrong. Argue better. It's just, it's wrong to hurt other people. 
Very easy. We'll be back with your calls. It's uh, 218-6399. The passcode is 2020 with the pound sign. Uh, we'll be right back. For those on YouTube, it's a radio broadcast, so I'm not going to be... Uh, and it's easier for me to edit, so that's why I, I mute up. So, But you can get me on the on the chat. Yes, welcome back to the No State Project here on LRN.FM, the Liberty Radio Network, baby. LRN.FM and streaming live on my YouTube channel, No State Project over here. And, uh, yeah, taxation is theft. I've, I've said government is a criminal organization. I, I think I've been very clear on that. I don't think uh, even critics uh, get that part of my, uh, <laughs> my show correct. So nobody who's a longtime listener of the show needs to text me and say, hey, is taxation theft? Uh, yeah, when you force somebody to give you money, a perfect stranger, okay, when you force someone, in, a stranger in the community to give you money, uh, yeah, that would be an act of aggression, and that would be immoral, and I think that is theft, so, yeah. Yes, welcome back to the No State Project. I'm your host, Mark Stevens, author of, yeah, and also of uh, Adventures in Legal Land, which you can get at markstevens.net. If you want to help support the show, which is appreciated, you can do so at markstevens.net and also markstevens.sales.com. If you want to join me on the big show, it's 218-632-9399, 218-632-9399. As usual, we had a tech issue, but I think... The caller line is fixed for whatever the hell that problem was. I think it uh, it, it it went away. So uh, for those just tuning in, yes, every quarter of the hour, since this is a radio broadcast, there is a commercial break. So every quarter, about the, every quarter of the hour. So uh, we only have three more for this show because this is the sec the third of three hours of Anarchy Radio right here. And so this is the first show with uh, uh, the Anarchy Banner back so i might be using that a lot more uh just so there's no uh no misunderstanding the show is about anarchy and of course always having to define the terms anarchy meaning no rule is actually i uh, had somebody on the show that thought it was chaos in government which i don't know where i don't i i I can't. I I just didn't didn't get that at all. But uh, it mean yeah. It's from people like myself who call ourselves anarchists, or the more uh, uh, socially acceptable voluntarists, uh, do so because we reject the concept of a ruling class, and that it's okay to lie, steal, and kill and cheat other people just because you call yourself a government. That if it's wrong for me to force someone in the community to give me money, a stranger. And then it's wrong for anybody to do that. And even if I got together with a few more of my neighbors, uh, it would still be wrong. That the numbers, it, you know, do not negate the moral nature of the act. So, there. I do not consider myself an anarchist because I believe I own myself. I think that is a wholly irrelevant, uh, an unnecessary addition to the, uh, to the anarchist position or voluntarist position. Uh, the, uh, just, it's repugnant to me, the ownership of a, that the body is property. And I don't accept that. Uh, I don't, uh, I'm not a follower of uh, Ayn Rand, so I don't, I don't, um, I reject this idea of the body as property and the idea of using, uh, abortion as birth control. Uh, yeah, always going to be immoral. I'm not talking if the mother's life is in danger. But, you know, okay, when it's a medical necessity, when someone just doesn't want to have the kid, uh, immoral. It's not a matter of property. Uh, that's just a way of excusing it. And using property rights, things like that, have has been used to justify some pretty heinous things, including the genocide. I know someone, you know, I don't want anyone, you know, so and so did a video and he said there's no such thing as an Indian Native American genocide because, uh, they're, they're still Native Americans. Uh, yeah, I'm not, uh, full creationist on that one, uh, there, uh, the, the, from the grandest reaches of the, uh, of the, uh, human intellect. Um, no, uh, the, um, just because the Indians did not accept the concept of property doesn't mean it was right to try to annihilate them. And for those who think it was government policy to annihilate and, and genocide, 
And uh, the fact that they didn't accomplish it does not mean that they weren't trying and it wasn't a genocide. Uh, you can still see online, well, still, you can see pictures online, of it was, and it was policy, it's admitted policy, to they were destroying their food supply, uh, they would, and, and they, they forced their children, I mean, my gosh, in Canada, they were doing it up until just like 1980, uh, where they, they would take their children to re-educate them to the Western European way, uh, the, 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 you know, to, and, and destroy their language and whatnot. Look what they try to do. Yeah, and, okay. So uh, I, I don't agree with the argument uh, that we even need the argument uh, to argue successfully and show the merits of anarchism by saying that it starts with self-ownership. No, it's it's wrong. You need rational, secular ethics. And that, 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 that's why government is wrong. That's why a ruling class is wrong. The, the idea that someone has a moral right to do what's immoral, it's ridiculous. That, it, that argument in and of itself shows what it is the basis of anarchy. Not saying that, well, I own myself. No, you are yourself. Why do you have to add in ownership? Not everything is about property. I, 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 it, it, it's, it's, like, it, it's like the god of, of some ANCAPs and some anarchists. Property. And on the first day, property was created. No! Property is important. But it shouldn't substitute or be used as an excuse to hurt people. The number is 218-632-9399. Did, uh, I, see, did it home bombing it? Did you have, uh, I'm sorry, did you have something else to add? Oh, I didn't know if I was hung up on by accident or on purpose. <laughs> oh, okay, I'm sorry, but, uh, uh, we got a, I, I've got a few minutes left in the segment. Okay. No, uh, yeah, you know. <laughs> Work it's with always, me. It's it's always the uh, people that are in charge of an organization that go ahead and create the tone of the culture of that organization. Uh, and uh, I think that, you know, as long as people are looking up to, um, you know, uh, figures, or, you know, Obama or any of them, uh, and they always assume, we always assume that the way we are today and who we are today is the correct way to be for everybody else. And it's just not necessarily true. And, uh, I think that, uh, yeah, the, um, as long as we, uh, accept the values and the beliefs and the the, I, the the systems that have been we've been indoctrinated with through the Prussian education system that uh, you know we're never really going to be able to uh, get past the whole idea of needing a ruling class. And yeah. I think that you're right about a lot about the idea that. A lot of people that are are in the anarchist movement, they don't want uh, they don't want rules. They're more about well, what I say is is right, and if you don't like it, tough shit. And that's the exact same thing that uh, you know the ruling class tells us. So if we're not going to be like them, because really, it, you know, something is going to have to change. Something's going to have to be. Uh, uh, in the mind state, in the state of mind that we're in, something is going to have to change or we're going to become exactly what we hate. Well, I don't know about that. I, I think something does have to change. We need some social evolution. We have to stop accepting that there are a group of people that the rules don't apply to and move towards stopping what props them up, and that is getting rid of the, uh, of the uh, compulsory violent support for them. And, and right. having a transparent system where, you know, you have the services that are provided communally or, or, or social, you know, uh, like the same services now, without, like, like roads and whatnot, we're just not 
uh, uh, using a prison system to pay for it. Uh, and, and so much will, will fall from that uh, to where, and I wish I had the time in the segment, but, you know, so that you don't have things like monopolies, where you, so you don't have things like uh, w- with the telecommunications industry where you have a monopoly because of government uh, giving them that. We'll finish in the next segment, uh, so just hold tight there at home moment. It. My name is Mark Stevens. You're listening to the No State Project here on LRN.FM. And, and I do want to address, and I will address the question, Jet 8888 is that if you don't claim yourself, are you leaving yourself vulnerable for someone else to claim you? So now, and I'll get to that in the next segment as well. So, uh, don't go away. We'll be back in just a few moments. Welcome back. You're listening to the No State Project here on LRN.FM, the Liberty Radio Network. I'm streaming live on my YouTube channel, No State Project. Uh, let's get back to the phones. We got a home bumming it. So just pick up where you left okay. off. Okay. Yeah, okay. So the last thing was how do we get these order takers to stop taking orders and actually <laughs> think about what they're doing because their actions are – what they're doing is without conscience. They cannot – a lot of them will tell you. They follow the orders whether they like them or not. Yep. And that's something that they are doing without conscience. So if you point, if you show them, a lot of them don't really think of it that way. If you show them that this is an unconscionable job, an unconscionable thing that they are doing, and that it is harming them on a subconscious level, because a lot of them end up going home and beating on their families, then they will go ahead and and they'll think about it. They'll realize it because a lot of people want to go ahead and pick up a gun or get into a fight or act out of anger. And that's what I think might, that would be a big problem. You'd end up having a, you know, a big bloodbath. And I don't think that that would change anybody's mind. Uh, no, you see, the the thing is, it, it for the vast, vast majority of bureaucrats and cops, they're not going to stop doing what they're doing as long as they're feeding their family, as long as they're able to get uh, paid and get a pension. They don't give it. They don't. It's just like someone who's really, really wealthy. They don't have to care. It, it, they may not necessarily be a psychopath, a diagnosable psychopath, but they don't, they have the privilege of not caring. And that's what money does to people. Not all, but that's what it tends to do. So, uh, yeah. y- y- we have to have an alternative. You're not, look, I, I don't think we're going to get anywhere by trying to convince police officers. These are useful idiots. These are guys who will tell you without a hint of shame whatsoever, I take orders. Cops, Take orders and cops give orders. They're not paid to think. They're not paid to have a conscience and they're not paid to, to, um, you know, to, to, to do the right thing. And, and, and it gets to what you were mentioning before that the tone is set by the top. Management sets the tone. If, if so, for example, I think right. you're right because if management will not enforce the rules to keep the company, the, the employee safe, for example, and that it, it enforced the rule, you know, basic uh, principles of, of do no harm where there's, you know, like a, not having a, a, a hostile work environment. If the management does it, allows that to happen, that is going to corrupt the whole damn thing. That's the whole few bad apples thing because it infects the whole system. Because now what you have is a situation where nobody wants to be a whistleblower. No one's going to say anything because they're going to be retaliated against. So that people keep their... So you can have somebody who otherwise would stand up and say something, but because the management is so bad, then, you know, the, 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 you know it, 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 look, I, I, I speak from a, experience, you know, a family member of mine where they allowed a, somebody into a position of, a, 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 of upper ma- middle management that was so bad and so against the company policy, but because they were having a sexual relationship with upper management, HR said there was nothing that could be done. So what you had was a mass exodus. They said, oh, F, you're saying, I'm a phone ghoul to me. No, I'm a phone ghoul to you. And so you had a, you had an exodus of really good, talented medical professionals who wound up leaving the department or the hospital because they would, because the management would not do the right thing. And, you know, I think what we have to do is educate people who can actually do something, educate the people, you know, 
and, and try yeah, to get well, the policies it, changed. It, and I think that you're also right on the fact. So there's got to be a, a multi-pronged uh, approach to this because you're also right that the money is a control mechanism and there has to be an alternative for them to go ahead and feed their families. Yeah. Yeah, I, I mean, I had spoken about a number of alternatives, but nothing actually worked out. And 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 it, it's you know, hey, okay, maybe it just wasn't a good idea. You know, I can accept that. Obviously, uh, you know, history teaches us teaches me that. Uh, but I, you know, if we're looking at changing the policy, I think if you change the policy, if you actually can get, we can get to a point in New Hampshire, for example, where. Uh, Prosecutors and you know uh, judges and police officers and bureaucrats are stripped of their immunity. They are now responsible for the damage that they cause, and it's not being supported on a violent compulsory basis. I think that will have a major psychological change in the type of people who are bureaucrats, because they have the, one of the key things missing is responsibility to the victim. And I, I go through in government indicted what that does to your psychology and how that changes your behavior. Bring back to where they're not above us. So you level the playing field. The cop is just out there actually trying to protect, you know, life, liberty, and property, okay? And and he's fully responsible for the damage that he causes. That's going to change the way they act. That's going to change the type of people that get in. And if it is transparent and they are responsible and whistleblowers are not, you know, excoriated, uh, then uh, I, I think that's going to go, uh, you know, it would be a big step in our so social evolution and how these people treat us. And if we could go ahead and drop a peg and drop the, the ruling class down a peg, by admitting that money is a control mechanism and doesn't have anything to do with deserve, then we could go ahead and, and, you know, people won't be looking up to them as being so wonderful and great just because they have more. Well, yeah, one of the few things I agree with Rush Limbaugh on, and because I, I think the man is a disgusting example of, uh, of humanity. Uh, I can't stand the guy, but he did say something that I, I got to agree. That's he's an right. Addict. He's got emotional problems. Well, Go ahead. Well, he's he's got yeah he he he's he's a shill. He actually he said government is a get rich quick scheme, and I'm paraphrasing that. And he and 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 on that he is absolutely right. Uh, it, that there's so much money by becoming a bureaucrat, becoming a part of the ruling class, that of course that together with no responsibility to your victims, of course is going to be problems. So. That's why we've got to get rid of the compulsory nature, strip them of their immunity. They're just employees. They're not honorable unless their actions show it and treat that. Then they get treated just the same way that you and I are. Uh, if I was to, you know, do some of the things that, well, look, if I just collected money, you know, by force from my community, I'm a criminal. This, if, if those rules are, are, in, are accepted uh, across the board and, and enough people accept the basic logic that it is wrong, that they do not have a moral right to be immoral, yeah, things can start to change. Yeah. Not till then. Yeah. People have to, as long as people accept them as authorities and that they have a moral right to be immoral, uh, nothing will change. Nothing. We're at, uh, I have to get some other calls. We're up against, uh, uh, wow, we got a lot of calls. <laughs> All right. Um, home bum, and I appreciate the call. Glad we could, uh, we could discuss that. Um, we'll, We'll be back here with your calls. Wow, we only have two segments left, so we'll do what we can to get everybody. Uh, we'll be back in just a few moments here on the No State Project, so please don't go away. Yes, we'll go back to the No State Project here on the Liberty Radio Network, LRN.FM. And streaming live on my YouTube channel. Here on uh, YouTube there, No State Project. Uh, get subbed if you're not. Because we're going to try to do the role playing after the show today, but uh, you know maybe at four fifteen uh, Pacific time, maybe a half fifteen, you know, maybe within a half hour of the live broadcast, so we get maybe get more participants uh, doing that. So if you are uh, prepping for court and you want to do some role playing, or you know, maybe even just hear it. Uh, which I highly recommend you doing. We're going to do that after the show. Contact me at Frank Rizzo three on Skype. And I get you the Discord link, and uh, we'll take it from there.
before I get to the call, I just want to address this question. Uh, if you don't, Jet888 is saying, if you don't claim yourself as property, as your own property, don't you leave yourself vulnerable for someone to claim to claim you? You don't need to say that you own yourself to defend against a claim that somebody owns you, um, at least you know, from my perspective. Uh, I'm not your property. You, it ends the discussion. I don't have to say, I, you, I'm not your property. I'm my own property. I mean, doesn't it? Is it me or does that really sound stupid? I, you don't own me. I own me. I, I, no, no, look, I, I guess maybe because I had a, you know, pounded into my head about being terse and making sure that your argument in your, you know, is terse. Just say what needs to be said. And so if somebody is actually going to be making a claim that they own me as property, I just, no, and I'm not your property. I don't need to add because I am my own property. I, I don't need to do that. I, I don't see the benefit of, of doing that. So uh, if, if someone is going to claim you as property, they do it now. Uh, they claim that they own us, basically. Well, they don't say ownership, but uh, they certainly act in a manner that that they have a right to tell us what to do and punish us if we don't, whether we're hurting someone or not. So, uh, yeah, I don't think yeah, I don't think you need to claim ownership of yourself uh, to exercise self defense, and I don't think your exercising of self defense of force hinges on the premise if you are. You, if you own yourself, uh, self-defense does not uh, come, you know, uh, an animal that has no concept of property whatsoever uh, can, uh, uh, can conceptualize that uh, it, it, if it is being attacked is not going to be thinking, oh, I own myself, so it's okay for me to defend my life. I, I, I think it's, it, 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 I, excuse me, but I just think it's a pseudo-intellectual kind of thing where someone's trying to sound more intelligent than they really are. And I'm not saying everyone doing that, but a few in particular that I have in mind, I think that's that's probably the case. Uh, uh, a very vocal one who, who thinks he's more intelligent than, than he actually comes across as. Uh, anyway, we've got a, another caller. We have uh, area code 801. I think it's Utah. Where, uh, what's your name? Where are you calling from? Yeah, my name's John. I actually uh, moved. I'm now in uh, Washington Heights. Wait, you said you said your name was John. Yeah. All right. Well, John, what can I do for you today? So uh, I just had a couple of things. I'm kind of new to uh, your uh, program, uh, so I was wondering. Uh, first off, uh, what would be the best place to kind of start and get an understanding of uh, the position you're taking with respect to how individuals should approach uh, conflicts with government? Well, I, you know, I have a, uh, like, a I have a book, Government Indicted, that that breaks a you know all, a lot of stuff down. Uh, it, it gives a complete model for uh, how I and many others have successfully defended ourselves against these bureaucrats. I have uh, that's the one you'd start with. That's a pretty good one. Yeah, you can start with the book. You can listen to the shows. I discuss this stuff on every single show. The the archives of the show go back years. Uh, not all of them are video. Yeah. Like this, but uh, you know, like like the the Wednesday show that I did. There's a lot of graphics with it, so a lot of what I'm saying I put in the graphics so that you can see the source. Um, yeah, I, I, I'm just trying to, to get kind of wrap my head around that your approach. I, I've seen a couple of different people's uh, different approaches uh, to it, and I'm just trying to figure out what's going to work best for my situation and that and that kind of thing. I'm not currently in any kind of trouble, but uh, I you know. I'd like to be as free from uh, government interference in my life as possible, and I understand that that's going to probably bring some attention to me if I'm not too careful. Well, I, I would be careful about it. I would not suggest, uh, unless you are doing it as an activist and you understand the consequences, I would not suggest taking the license plate off your car. I would always travel in a car that has a current tag on it. Uh, but another thing I would suggest, in addition to my work, I would... Uh, learn, look at your logical fallacies and basic principles of logic so that you'll be able to recognize a bad argument, whether it's for me or somebody else. So if I, and, and, you know, even, uh, just looking at this, uh, know your logical fallacies is just a graphic and it goes through them. Uh, so you, 
you can recognize a bad argument because I I, I believe in being a skeptic and and, and uh, I like what Christopher Hitchens said that uh, that that asserted what is asserted without evidence can be dismissed without evidence and uh, basic principle of logic that the one making the claim bears the burden of proof. And so I make a lot of yeah, like I, the I, I, yeah I I so so analyze my arguments the same way you would a government type or a prosecutor who's hitting you with it. So assume that what I'm saying is is false until I give you the evidence and the logic that it is based on. Because I'll admit it's a pretty bold claim of mine to say that uh, the uh, there's no evidence that these written instrument called uh, written instruments called constitutions and laws apply to anybody that's that's a pretty big uh, pretty bold claim and I, I I you know like anyone else the burden is on me I have to be able to prove yeah. that and I think I can I think the fact that we start from uh, government is just men and women and we can prove that. And that they force everyone to in the community to give them money under threat of jail. And uh, if we start from those facts, how and uh, given those facts, does it make any sense at all that their constitutions, these written instruments, would apply to anybody under those conditions, those facts? Yeah. Yeah. See, well, uh, and, uh, well, there, no. Well, I, I mean, uh, you give me a good place to start there. Okay, you know, I, and I think nothing is nothing is immune from challenge. And if if you ever have a situation where somebody is saying that this claim, you just have to accept it on you know as true, I, I think that you're looking at a con man. And and uh, so what I what I recommend doing when you're defending yourself is that we should. Uh, challenge the prosecutor's claims against you because he has the bad burden of proof, right? Yeah, I right. mean, uh, absolutely, he's supposed to. Uh, the the one place I think that I'm not quite sure if that's really the case is the tax courts, and that's my, my bigger question. The tax court? Well, let, all right, we'll get to tax court in just a second. So the second part of of uh, uh, of how we're uh, I recommend defending ourselves is we're going to not give the prosecution's claims any free passes. That we're going to challenge all of them. Now that makes sense, right? Yeah, definitely. Uh, make, that makes a lot of sense. I've, I've heard a couple of your uh, your uh, shows and things like that where you talk about that extensively and it definitely makes sense to me. Right. So it doesn't make any sense to help the prosecution by assuming one, you know, th some of their claims are true. Yep. Right. And the basis of the prosecution's claims and I have video of the Supreme Court Chief Justice here in Arizona agreeing to this. It's the, it, it, they'll tell you this. And that's what's important is that they're saying it to you. It's provable You can, and they say it. That the the basis of their claim is always if you're physically in Utah, then the laws apply given them jurisdiction, and that should be challenged. So just hold on a second. We're up against the break. We'll be right back. Uh, we'll be right back here on the No State Project talking about some of the basics at, on how to defend. Uh, that is the way they that they, all their code violations stem from that argument that if you're physically in Utah. Then the laws apply, and there's no evidence to support that whatsoever. But we'll be back in a moment, so don't go away. Yeah, welcome back to the No State Project. We, we've had uh, the all caps name stuff in the comments, and uh, now somebody UCC maritime law. Ay vey. The law we're under is called the force continuum. Do as we say, or you will get hurt. That's that's it. Everything else is just, you know, is just window, window dressing and, and uh, public relations. Do as we tell you or get punished. That's 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 their law. All right. Well, I want to bring back. We got John in Washington Heights. Uh, John, let me just ask you, because uh, I'm going to try to get another caller. You know, we've got a couple of minutes and then I'll try to get another caller. Uh, you see the you, you see the, 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 the logic and why we would want to follow those three principles of keep the burden of proof and challenge the prosecution's claims. Don't give them any free passes and challenge. And uh, always challenge the foundation of their claim, right? I'm sorry, again. We're going to challenge the prosecution's claims because the burden of proof is on them. Two, we're not going to give the prosecution any free passes. Three, we're going to challenge hard, you know, uh, uh, zealously and focus most of our attention on the foundation 
of the prosecution's claims, and that is that uh, if you're physically in Utah, the laws apply. Right. Yeah, I get that. Okay. Um, what about, so you would approach the same way if uh, you're talking about, uh, say, you're physically in uh, the United States of America, that the laws apply to you, the federal laws? Yes, the, because the, the, you're talking about another constitution. They believe if you're physically or one time were physically in the United States when you were born, that a written instrument from written in 1787 not only applies to you, but creates obligations on you. And that's a legal claim. The, you know, so what evidence they are required to have evidence to prove that that's true. Some will argue, and you know, that they don't have to do that. I, I disagree because they're not going to allow you and I to make the found, a foundational legal claim against them without any proof. Right. right. And, and, uh, and their tactic is always going to be to, to point to the standards, which is uh, the laws or the or the Constitution or whatever, rather than the uh, evidence that is being put up against the standard or measured against the standard, which is the, the facts or evidence. Well, well, what they'll typically do in court for you know is that they'll point to the code. And and they'll say, well, the code yeah, that's says thing. that's the standard. Yeah. And so what I what I recommend doing when they do that to me, and I have calls where I, I address the actual bureaucrats and prosecutors with this, is, uh, and we can get them to reverse that. And so you ask a leading question, or we should be asking leading questions like this, where it's yes or no, and the information is in the question. And I asked them, isn't that backwards? Isn't the Constitution the authority for the code, not the other way around, like you're asserting? And they'll, well, yeah, you're right. Okay, so if the Constitution is is the proof of the code, again, let me ask you, what proof do you have that the Constitution applies just because I'm physically in the United States or I'm, I'm physically in Utah? Yeah, so. And, and, you know, go... Is there, is there something you can do, like, preemptively? Uh, like, I see some people talk about all kinds of weird, crazy things uh, about study birth certificate and all that kind of stuff. Um, is there anything that uh, you say that you should be doing preemptively to to prevent somebody from coming up against you? Um, <laughs> There's to... nothing. No, no. I I, I know of no okay. effective. If they attack you and they charge you, file a motion to dismiss and discover request and start questioning them on the facts that they have to support their mm -hmm. claims. Uh, but preemptively, no. Nah. I, I, what I suggest doing is maybe okay. getting some information, you know, some testimony, statements you can use against them. So I would go to uh, city council meetings, and I have a, f a couple of them online where I've done it here in, in Mesa. Well, I did it in I did it in Scottsdale. I did it in Tempe. Uh, and you can question them on these same things that you would ask in court. Well, you guys operate under the presumption that if I'm physically in Utah, then your laws apply and create all sorts of obligations. And and they'll say, well, yeah, of course, sir, that's how it works. And you say, well, what kind of evidence, what kind of facts, if any, do you rely on to prove that that claim is true? So, with respect to that, would you say, like, uh, talk to somebody uh, with the IRS or somebody like that and get them to explain to you what statutes or whatever they think apply to you? Uh, well, would I? Beforehand? Well, the thing is, you don't know who's actually going to charge you, so you don't know what agent is going to be responsible for the claim, just like you don't know what cop is going to stop you, and he's the one, and he's... Sure. So, uh, but if you... But I mean, in, in a, is there, like, somebody, like, in a general sense, that you could say, hey, uh, you know, I'm just trying to find out about the, you know, how to file my taxes, uh, can you tell me how do I know whether or not certain things yeah. apply to me? Uh, it it may, it, yeah, you may not be able to use it. Wow, that is... That is... Is that... Oh, come on. Right at the end of the show. So, um, I, what I think you can do is, like I mentioned, the city council. And you can go, to, you know, you can talk to them. You can talk to a city manager. Uh huh. And you can ask them. Yeah, I'm, 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 more, I'm more concerned about my, uh, the federal levels in the city, but, uh, mm, yeah, do you see, there. yeah, you don't know who's, Again, you don't know who's going to be bringing the charge. So, uh, as far as preemptively and being able to use it against them, and at the federal level, no, I wouldn't say yeah. that there's anyone because no matter what is said, you're not going to stop an agent or their computer from attacking you. Sure. So. All right. All right. I appreciate the call. Oh, oh, oh continue to keep myself. All right, thanks, Mark. Yeah, uh, we're live on on Wednesdays also. So if you have other questions, don't hesitate to call. 
All right. All right. Appreciate the call, John. I'm, I'm going to drop off the caller line, so because it looked like I got my resident troll back. So we don't have to worry about that anymore. And we only have, I only have a few minutes left anyway. So I did want to address what, um, uh, a friend in Cal, in Chris in North Carolina had, uh, brought up. And, and I don't have too much time to talk about this, but it's a, I guess it's a good way to end the, the show. Uh, what do we do when the bureaucrat starts playing dumb? And what I mean by that is, is it, it is the political tactic of saying, it, it, it lying by saying, I don't understand what you're saying. I don't understand what you're getting. And so, unfortunately, what you have to do when they're doing that, we know they're lying. So, you got to roll with it. Oh, okay. And, and I said, just start it over again and use their statements. Sir. Aren't you or doesn't this agency operate under the presumption that if I'm physically in Arizona, that your constitution and code apply? Yeah. Okay, so you understand that. That's how you operate. Yeah. Can you prove that that's true? So if I ask you, you're able to present evidence that that's true, right? You're not just making, you, you could throw them uh, in a little snarkiness. You, they, you, you're not just pulling that out of thin air, are you? I mean, you can actually prove that that's true. I mean, you, you, you know, and you, because you, you, you wouldn't, you wouldn't come after me and take my property if, if that wasn't true. Well, yeah, a, so it's absolutely true. You can prove right now. And so you spoon feed them. So you can, you can prove this. They were call of shame, so I'll say that, you know, to our last call, listen to the, uh, a lot of the call of shame, so you have an idea of how these people uh, will respond to you and how I have responded and what is resolved, for, you know, what has come from that. So when they play stupid, you gotta, you gotta just take a deep breath and, and spoon feed them one little piece at a time. I, you know, I love when they come out and they say, I don't have to prove that. Okay. Well, just, 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 if you're, uh, to know if you're operating in good faith or not, can you? Or you, or you know, it's, it's, you gotta ask leading questions. Can you do that? Or are you just making a baseless claim against me? Because you, they'll let you get away with it. Because there are no, there are no facts to prove that. And if there were facts to prove that, then all these bureaucrats, including the Chief Justice of the Arizona Supreme Court, would have just laid them on the table. They wouldn't have said stupid things such as, well, the facts that prove the, the Constitution applies to you right now, Mark, because you're physically in Arizona, are all the people we've prosecuted and put in prison. And I'll say to those who are new listening to the show, you have to accept that, it, it, you have to assume that what they're saying to you is false. And you have to challenge them on. You have to look at the logic about it. Is it logical? Is it a valid argument to say that the other, other putting other people in prison proves the constitutional laws apply to me? Yeah, because you, you have to break it down and look at what they're actually saying. Logic dictates you have to look at what about the first person they prosecuted? There, there wasn't a history of anybody else. So the first person they prosecuted could not, under their own argument, it's that easy to show just how, how, how ridiculous their claims are. This is why when you have a prison system, you don't need facts and logic and evidence. You don't need good faith. But hey, I appreciate everyone tuning in today. My name is Mark Stevens. This has been the No State Project for April 20th, 2019. I will be live on Wednesday, so salud.